Hello, my name is Virgil Mayberry, and I'll be doing a short tutorial on um, VimScript within Vim, um, namely the execute function within VimScript. So for those of you who aren't real familiar with Vim, it is a text editing program um, that is really useful for um, powerful editing of text, especially code. Um, and VimScript is a scripting language that's made for use within Vim itself. Um, so here I am, I'm actually inside Vim editing a text document. Um, the first line that you see there is an example of the execute statement. So if I type in colon, down at the bottom you can see I have a, a prompt going. Um, and I can type in that first line, that execute. Um, and it is an executable statement. So I'll, I'll walk through it real quick f with you. The first word is a keyword execute meaning that we're going to execute this and what that means is it's going to take the following string and parse it as an actual command and then run it as if it had been entered by the user so that first word there normal is a keyword that means run this in normal mode as if uh, that's the the stock mode when you first turn on vim that's what it's in is in normal mode and the exclamation point means ignore any um, customized settings I might have in my VimRC when executing these um, next statements and that's that's really useful because a lot of people have um, very different things in their VimRC's so it's uh, it's it's good to make sure that you're using the stock um, implementation of everything so you don't have some weird um, you know undetermined format coming out of your your scripts so if I just hit oh I'm sorry I was on the wrong, on the wrong line there um, if I just enter this, it, it actually um, types it all out as if I had um, gone to a new line and typed in, in normal mode here, if I had typed in I and then hello, my name is Virgil. Um, so so it's, it's really good for automation of things that you, um, you know, maybe something you do five or six or seven times an hour um, and you just want to you know you do it the same way every time so you just want to automate it so this is one example of such a, a function that I I have um, it's, a, it's a function it's written in Vim script um, it's a valid syntax and it is a delete trailing white space so um, one thing some people are very picky about uh, trailing white space you know some programs get really thrown off if there's trailing white space so I'll highlight it for you just so you can see um, what I typed in down at the bottom there uh, forward slash backslash s which stands for a space and then that uh, backslash plus dollar sign is a end of line so we're looking for spaces at the end of a line um, one or more spaces at the end of a line and so you can see those yellow blocks are trailing white space that I have in my file but I have it set up so it executes this trailing white space function every time I save my files. So I hit colon W and hit enter. And when it saves my file, it deletes all trailing white space. And uh, that's done you know, purely in Vim script. And it's really helpful to automate some of those things that you do a lot and that are kind of mundane. You don't want to be worried about white space when you're trying to get your, your code pushed through for the week. Um, so let's take a look at the, these. I have two execute statements in here. They're, they're really simple. Um, so again, execute, take the, the following string, parse it as a command. It's in normal mode, ignoring my custom vimrc. And uh, this is as if I had typed mz, which means bookmark the current line as the letter z. And then it's going to execute this substitution statement. And then I have another execute command again, in normal mode, ignoring my vimrc. And apostrophe z means go back. So if I type mz here, and here I type apostrophe Z, it goes back to the bookmark that I called Z. And that's that's not really anything earth shattering, but it's it's kind of nice. Say I have um, some white space here, and I'm up at the top, and I save it. I, you know, it keeps my cursor where it was originally. I don't have to worry about my cursor jumping to whatever random line had some white space on it. So it's, it's really helpful for that, and uh, it's just, you know, automation, saving a little few keystrokes every day, um, make your life a little more pleasant. So here I have another one. Um, it's really simple, 
really simple, very similar to the first one. Um, uh, you know, two more executable statements. Um, I, actually, this one's doing the same thing. It's just making a bookmark called I, and then we're jumping back to the bookmark. Um, this function uh, searches for this keyword, um, which is written in a foreign language to keep it from accidentally removing something that somebody typed in, and then it, uh, it puts in a time and date stamp. So when I make a new C header file, I have a skeleton file that uh, it automatically writes in there. Um, I'll show it to you real quick. So this is my skeleton file. Um, actually, these the last four lines aren't, but everything else is in my skeleton file. And you can see right here, it has a time and date stamp when I created this file. And it originally just contained the keyword, and that function went through and it removed this keyword and substituted it for a current time and date stamp. Um, so you know it's really really great to be able to automate your text editing. Um, this one is a little bit more complicated, so it'll take a few minutes to go through this. Um, so once again, this is a a, a function um, called C prototype function. Um, the I don't know if any of you are familiar with the registers, but the at at registers, the undefined register. So anytime you copy or delete something, it automatically goes into this at at register. So I I like to save that just in case I was working with something. Um, I don't like overriding my registers. So another execute statement, normal mode, ignoring my stuff. Um, MA for mark the current line as. Uh, the bookmark A, um, the YY will yank the entire line, copy the entire line. Um, we're going to search for the key, the the word prototypes within the file that I'm editing, um, and then uh, this backslash CR um, is the same as hitting enter, and then uh, the close parenthesis is go to the nearest. Um, white space or the, the end, end of the current paragraph sorry end of the current paragraph um, K means go up one line P for paste um, capital A for insert mode at the end of the current line put a semicolon at the end and then hit escape and then jump back to where I started to um, and restore the restore the register that I saved so this is um, going back to that that C file that I have right here so um, say I just typed in this function um, and I need to prototype it well rather than copy it um, you know say you have a few hundred lines in here it's it's no small feat to scroll all the way back up to the top especially if you don't know exactly what line number it's on so you know it's just nice to be able to I hit you know backslash PF prototype function and it copies it up there and puts a semicolon at the end and just makes my life a lot easier. Um, let me show you my, my vimrc where I have this. Um, here's another function I have. It uh, toggles number lines. Um, here's the um, trailing white space function that we were talking about earlier. Um, the timestamp, my prototype function. And so, um, you know, you, you have these one of the most common places to run your Vim script is out of your VimRC. Um, some of these I have on auto commands. Uh, this particular one right here, the prototype function, I have it running off of backslash pf. So I, ty I type backslash pf and it executes these two functions. Um, anyway, so there's there's just a lot of things that you can do with Vim script. And uh, the execute statement is a wonderful tool within Vim script to allow you to execute things as exactly as if you had typed them so you know and I, I put all these on multiple lines to make it more readable for me in case I want to change it up a little bit but you could put them all on one line and it'll just keep executing them exactly as if you had typed it in um, so it's it's really good to be able to to automate some of the things that you do in a text editor especially when you're coding and there's certain things that you do you know tons of times a day I you know reduce the chance of those repetitive stress injuries and automate a little bit of it. Um, anyways, I hope you learned something. Um, I hope this was educational. If you want to learn more, uh, Google Learn Vim Script the hard way. Uh, thanks for your time.